Working at Walmart as a cashier since October last year, Christmas Eve rolls around and thank God I'm not scheduled to work. I was new. I didn't know what to do, so I went to ask my manager what we could do for him. The manager said there's nothing we can help with as long as the coupon is expired. Ten minutes before I was going to take my break, didn't want to bother and have an argument with the old guy. I just returned the coupon saying, Thanks for coming to Walmart. Have a nice one. I saw his face, he was pissed, and he left the store nervous without saying a thing. Usually, I take my half break to eat something and the other half to smoke, but that day I was so tired, I needed to go out for a walk while smoking a cigarette. I went outside and saw the creepy old man standing next to my car. I was shocked. I asked him to move away from my car and he pushed me, shouting that I killed him and he won't forget my face and number plates. I shout back at him, Leave me alone, man. Your coupon is expired, is not my fault. He walked away grumbling something inaudible. After that, I couldn't enjoy the rest of my break, so I returned to the store and rushed to finish earlier what I had to do. After two hours, I had done everything and jumped in my car heading home, but I saw that a car was following me. Taking every street as I took, couldn't go the same route because I live in a small village around, and I know every neighbor from there and didn't recognize the car behind. When I entered the street where my house is, I lost them. They were heading straight ahead and didn't turn right like I did. Grabbed my keys. Cannot say I slept well that night, asking if I would feel safe ever again. The next day I called my manager and asked him to check the footage of last night to see how that stranger got to my car and what he did next. I had a feeling he was the one who followed me last night on my way home, maybe wanted to know my address. The creepiest thing ever. My manager told me that there was no one to be seen on the footage, that I asked him to check just me in the parking line. I was frightened, shivers down my spine. How could it be possible? I wasn't drunk. I'm not crazy. He was real. The manager advised me to take some time off just to clear my mind and have some time to relax and get back to work in better shape. My name is Rosa. I have been working at Walmart since 2015. I know probably all the people who buy regularly from the store, by their faces. It is very rare to see new faces around. The store is in Portland, Oregon area, which is pretty isolated but still a big store and huge alleys to work on to keep everything tidy. I maintain the cleaning in the store, me and other two colleagues. We were pretty fun together and time passed fast while working together, but due to some family changes, I had to go for night shifts one month ago. Because at night the store is not that busy, I am the only one who is working at cleaning during it, but I don't feel that lonely thanks to the earphones I can listen to my favorite music while I am doing my job and still have fun, even without my colleagues around. Two weeks ago was very cold, one or two customers per hour entering the store spending just a few minutes in, the atmosphere was really chill. The night shift begins at 9 p.m. and finishes at 4 in the morning. Around midnight, a guy walked in and waved at me. I asked him if I could help him with something. He asked me what department I was working for, and I told him that. I do the cleaning job, but at night, because we are only two people in the store, I'm helping with everything needed. He smiles with an eerie sparkle in his eyes, mentioning that is from corporate, and he is doing some checks. Usually, we are informed when someone from corporate comes in to do their corporate stuff, but this time they probably wanted to skip this part. Luckily, the store was all cleaned, and the shelves looked nice and tidy. And I didn't bother too much that he was there to check what he needed to, but I let Emma know, the cashier from that night, about his presence, just in case. She told me she wanted to take a break just to have a smoke and she would come back in five. I took a seat on the till chair, and sat there for ten minutes. She wasn't there to see, but I was relaxed, because I almost finished my tasks. The guy from the corporate came to the till and asked me if I was alone now, and I said that my colleague was on break, but she will come back in a few minutes. He smiled at me and asked me to follow him to show me something that was not right in the store. I started to be suspicious as to what he wanted to show me. I said I couldn't leave the till until my colleague got back because someone had to be there for the customers. He looked around and saw there was no one in the store, and just waved his hands like, let's go. Okay, 
You are the boss, I exclaimed, and walked with him to the fitting area. He showed me a small area covered with some dust and asked me to clean it up. That was on the floor, near the corner. I had to bend down to clean it. He stood on my back and looked at me while I was cleaning it. It felt really awkward, like he was looking at my curves. After that weird moment, he asked me to help him choose a pair of shoes for the Christmas party, and I refused him saying, I am not good about shoes, just sneakers. But he insisted, and then asked me to tie the shoelace because he had a problem on his back and couldn't bend over. I was feeling abused by him, just because it's from corporate, but he was polite all the time and I said, fine, I'll do it. While we were standing there, my colleague called my name saying she needed help with something. Felt like she heard my prayers. I ran to her and asked what happened. She said that she had spoken with the manager, who is her girlfriend, and told her that the guy who said is from corporate is not, and he could be a dangerous man. So we might have to be cautious and act accordingly. We immediately called the police, but due to the storm, they late arriving, and we were so scared of being there alone with this person. This guy became suspicious and followed me through the alleys of the store while I faked doing my job as usual. Called my name a few times, pretending not to hear him, and then he grabbed my shoulder and told me to stop, otherwise he would hurt me. I was lucky that the police arrived at that very moment and arrested him, but the fear I felt then was unimaginable. I still work there, but I return to the day shift again because I won't be able to handle my mental health if something like this ever happens to me again. I'm still very affected by what happened and still terrified. Working the night shift at the Clarksburg Walmart had always given me the creeps, but I never expected real horror lurking on those shadowy shelves. I first sensed something amiss on one of my first days as a toy department manager. I stayed late organizing the back room, fatigue weighing on my shoulders. As I slotted boxes onto a high shelf, the overhead lights suddenly cut out, plunging me into darkness. I froze, listening. A faint scratching sound emanated from the corners. Too rhythmic to be routine store noises. It stopped as abruptly as it had started. The lights flickered back on. I shook off my nerves and hurried to finish. But the incidents accumulated. Products fell off shelves without cause. Stockroom doors slammed unexpectedly, nearly smashing my fingers. The plastic playsets vibrated violently when I passed by, their tiny occupants seeming to leer at me. My co-workers joked about ghosts, but the deepening dread in my gut said otherwise. The discovery of the mutilated mouse was the first tangible sign. Its broken body lay behind the board games, fur matted with blood, its insides hollowed out. No predator could have slipped into our steel-doored stockroom. Nausea rising in my throat, I reported it to the senior staff. They ignored my frantic concerns, telling me to toss it in the trash compactor. Then came the damaged Power Wheels box. Dark stains oozed down its sides, the cardboard sagging unnaturally. As I dragged it toward the compactor, it suddenly tripled in weight. I tasted something foul rotten eggs and rancid meat. I opened the flaps with trembling hands. Violent maggots spilled out along with an overwhelming stench. Inside, clutched by melting plastic seats, was a twisted corpse the size of a small child. I stumbled backwards, gagging. Where eyes should have peered out were empty holes swarming with insects. Its melted mouth was open, filled with shattered teeth. My hands shook violently as I forced the box shut and fled the stockroom. Just then, all light vanished once more. I felt a rush of unnatural cold. Toys around me shook violently before levitating toward the black ceiling. A tortured, inhuman wail pierced my ears. Over the cacophony, I heard my name called in an eerily familiar tone. I turned and saw the face of our deceased store manager hovering in the dark. His sunken eyes bored into mine, flesh rotting off the yellowed bone. I ran and never looked back. But no matter where I hide, I still hear the shrieks of damned souls wandering the Clarksburg Walmart at night. <laughs>